call the meeting to order. Let the record reflect um, all board members present except Aaron, Shudi, and Adam Bloom, who are not with us this evening for they have other commitments tonight. Recognition of visitors and guests. We will welcome all of you here this evening. We have uh, several recognition items. First of all, congratulations to the boys track team in winning the Big South Large Conference School Championship. They also went on to play second at the Minnesota State Track Meet. Abigat Opu was first place at triple jump, sixth place in the long jump. Marino Opu was fourth place in the 110 meter <coughs> hurdles and fourth place in the 300 meter hurdles at 39.06 seconds, new school record. Four by 800 relay team was fourth place. All, off Becca Morkey, Fanuel Wolday, Philman Wolday and Micah Wallu or the team members. The 440 relay team also come in sixth place. McKaylee Walu, Jake Onswina, Marona Opio, and Abigat Opio. Congratulations to our girls golf team who received third place in the sections and shot their best score of the year as a team. Also congratulations to Lily Malberg on qualifying for the girls state golf tournament. Congratulations to Island Barber as being named all conference in tennis, Tristan Subberal as conference in baseball, and Hannah McNabb all as all conference in softball. Congratulations to all those students. Very, very well, good job, well done this year. Okay, now we go on to public participation. I've received no request for public participation. Recognition of students, staff, and community. I guess we just done that. Recognition of tenure teachers. That is next. Yeah. Do you have a list of names? I, do. I don't have a. Here's the list you can read. So those receiving tenure for teachers, if you guys would come over here, Mr. Lorenz will read your name and the board members all wanna line up over here to shake your hand, so. Go down the list, do you want me to? Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yep. So I just start reading. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Start at the top. Okay. We only have five here. So. Okay. <clears throat> we have Tony Bartman from the middle school. John Asso Barroa at the high school. Rebecca Brignac at the high at Prairie. Paul A. Brown at Prairie. Mary Deutscher at the high school. Holly. Binky at the Prairie, Roche Gath at Middle School, Elizabeth Hallquist at Prairie. Okay. And we'll have you line them. Go back to here. Okay. Heather Kanigi at the high school. Aaron Lanneman, the middle school. Jose Colazo Morales at the high school. LJ Napton at the high school. Jenna Nelson at the high school. 
Kelly A. Nelson, the high school. Thank you. Jetsy Nitsuki, the high school. Katie Pedersen, middle school. Austin Smith Peters at the high school and at the Learning Center. Whitney Rogers at Prairie. Michaela Schroeder, high school. Amber Tarud, middle school. And Samantha Wolthowitz, I'm not sure about that name, at the Prairie. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the new tenure teachers. Okay, item 1.34 is graduation rate presentation by Josh Noble, Director of Instruction. Good evening. Uh, the information that I just shared in the packets. Um, sorry. The information shared, um, the couple important things. This is 2022 graduating class. I know sometimes it gets confusing because we just graduated a, court, or a group of kids in 23. The state is always about a year behind with the grad data. Um, another important piece is this is Worthington High School students only and does not include the Learning Center. <clears throat> um, the state released these grad rates towards the end of April. We had been watching this class very closely due to the above average enrollments um, of students during the 2018 school year when they were freshmen. Uh, prior to the 2022 school year, our four-year grad rates um, typically were at about 85% over the past, eight, uh, past five years. Um, if you look at slide one, the data from the class of 2022 our four-year graduation, graduation rate was 67.5. Um, and then we're gonna go over the next few slides and break down some grad rates by race and ethnicity. A question. Slide two shows our uh, subgroup of... Just a quick question on Mr. Sorry. Nolder. Hope, sorry to interrupt you. Just on the beginning number for... for did we the have The total a, number? Yeah, like... A, Kindergarten so, number, is that fair? Yes, to... so beginning number would be 258 students that Mars data would show that we were essentially responsible for. Thank you. And that's based on students that were with us in the system or moved into our system. Thank you. Uh, second slide, our Asian subgroup was at 81.1%. Uh, pay close attention though, that was a very small subgroup. There was only 11 students in that subgroup. The next slide was our black or African-American student subgroup. The four-year graduation rate was 93.3. Another small group, uh, 15 total students, but that is definitely a success. It's an area that the state is watching very closely. 
Slide four is our uh, Caucasian or white students. That was at 98.5%. That was 68 total students. Moving on to slide five. This is our Hispanic or Latino population. Had a 50% four year grad rate. And it was a total of 160 students in that class. Uh, one important piece to I want to show you on slide six, we are able to desegregate the data and look at that Hispanic and Latino population who no longer need EL services. So students who um, have tested their way out of needing additional support. The state keeps those kids in that subgroup for an additional two years, but after the two years after, after testing out, they no longer count in that subgroup. And of those students, we had 94.3% of our Hispanic and Latino population graduate in four years. And that was still a total of 70 students. Slide seven is an area that we as a district need to clearly focus on. This is our um, EL population. We will get into a little more detail towards the end. Um, that group of students was 22.8% graduating in four years and it was a total population of 101 students in that graduating class. And then slide eight, I added one slide to look at all of our students um, that did not qualify for language services. And in that group, it would be 95.1% graduated in four years, and that would have been 163 students. The last page in your packet is probably at least I believe the most informative. When I mentioned we were watching this grade closely, um, we now have the capability to actually dig down deeper into who these specific students were that maybe didn't graduate on time. In the past, we'd look at percentages and kind of make school improvement plans and then move on. Um, now we're able to really dig into the data and figure out who they were. So of the 258 that Matt had alluded to earlier that we were technically responsible for, the 86 students that did not graduate in four years, seven of those students chose to continue. Uh, the state does continue to track and monitor the fifth, sixth, and seven year grad rates. Um, obviously we want students to graduate in four, but if they're not able to, we wanna convince them to continue working towards their diploma. So we did have seven students, seven students continue. Um, interesting fact, those seven students were students who were within our system before high school. So we had built relationships with them either in elementary, maybe even a little bit of time in middle school. And even though they weren't able to um, complete their graduation in the four years, they were willing to come back this year. Four of those students chose to do that at the high school. Three of those students did that at the learning center. <clears throat> this next subgroup, is the reason that we really started to watch closely. The 79 students of dropout are unknown. So if students drop out and they tell us that they're done with school, we can mark that in the MARS system as a true dropout. Um, if they just stop coming to school, there's a 15 day drop or some students move. Sometimes they'll even tell us where they're going, but if we do not receive records requests from another school in the system, they show up as an unknown. 72 of those 79 students um, all qualified for EL services and they joined us here at the high school during the fall of 2018. They were all tagged as freshmen due to lack of credits. The average age of those students was 17 at the time of registration. And of those students, the average amount of time that they spent in our system was eight months. Um, a few kids chose to continue on and they, the most was 23 months, so about two school years there were a handful or more that were only here for a month. So the average was eight months of those 72 students. And I won't go in detail because I know Mr. Langard has a lot on the agenda as well and I want some time to uh, answer some questions. I did add that last um, piece at the bottom there. It's an important factor to know that when we really look into the data of who these kids are that are not being successful currently, it's important to point out that at least based on this year's graduating class of 22, the students who spent any time, even at our middle school, were very successful graduating in four years. There was 96% of them who graduated on time. 
we clearly have work to do with the subgroup of students who move into our schools, move into our community later in their high school career, and we have a lot of um, credits to catch up. Okay, thank you, Josh. Any questions? Any Josh? questions? Chair? The, the age of the students that you're talking about, uh, average age, I think you said 17, and obviously, if we're starting at f as freshmen, there's an age difference, and, and obviously they, they haven't had the advantage of as much education or having a good education from where they were coming to us from. Um, do we have, does the state have, or do we have any plans or, or ideas of when we get these students who come into our district to do something different with them or, or, or have more communication with them to find out their goals or what's going on because it sounds like yep. uh, it sounds like we need to treat them differently we can't just stick them into our system and expect them to come out the other end as, as successes uh, you know eight months you know they get to be it sounds like they turn eight, eight months they're they're in they're they're 18 years old and they're on their way to wherever their life is taking them so you know is there something we can do for those who do not actually have an intention of graduating, just putting in their time to get to that age of 18 or get through that for that one year and then they're out the door, that we can have a different type of program for them that will give them some other life skills to make them a little more successful because we figure they're probably not gonna come back? Well, I mean, a couple of things though. So we definitely have started to ask more questions during our intake and registration process to really try to figure out what is the goal of some of these students. Um, many of these students are, they're here, they wanna be in school, they wanna learn the language, but they, they carry a fair amount of responsibility um, in terms of trying to earn money, support their family, far above what, what some of our other students deal with at age 17. Um, I also think some of them, even during the intake, will will share. They they just they do want to work. They want to learn the language, and they know in a high school is probably the fastest way for them to learn the language. Um, but some will state that is their main goal, and it's not necessarily the diploma itself. So they value the education and understanding how to navigate working and living in our community and learning the language. Um, the value of a high school diploma at that point in their life is just something we need to continue to work on, helping them understand. Part, part, part of, too, that goes along with that is getting some of these students probably not only the relationship to try and keep them, but also the opportunity to give them job skills. So whether it's career and technical ed type skills or... Um, those types of abilities to earn an appropriate living. A high majority of those 79-ish students that we're talking about as well, um, most of, of the students who at least came in the fall of 2018 arrived without parents. They, they moved in with a sponsor, they had adult support here, but it was not their uh, parents. Any further questions for Josh? Mr. Chairman, is, you, you talked about this particular class being followed. Is the same attention being given to the next classes or a plan as to how to reevaluate what numbers and how you're going to keep track of that? Or the I think now that we, we know that the, these are things we need to continually work on. So they're part of our school improvement efforts. How do we engage quicker? <laughs> How do we help them connect with our high school, get them courses, potentially even CTE type courses, but also credit bearing courses quicker. Um, I do think for some of these students that we've been able to find ways to get them into credit bearing courses, they would have stuck it out for a longer period of time. I would argue that the ones who chose to give up in a month, there was very little we could have done with scheduling and, and supports that quickly to really help them engage. That's more about really getting to know them on the front end. And, and understanding what is their goal, what what are they registering for, 
type of a deal. But I, yes, we will watch the data and disaggregate it like this from now on. Do we have the, the ability to, to customize the education? I mean, if, the, if you're able to, or to, you, I mean. To a point. Okay. Um, you know, you will hear the MDE talk a lot about world's best workforce. They will really push CTE type programming. At the very same time, they have the academic standards that are required. So to fit all of that together, especially to a 17 year old learning the language, brand new to a community, to make all of that fit within that time frame is extremely difficult. And I do think if we were given a little more freedom to say this is more of a CTE track and we can not worry as much about some of the academic standards and requirements, it might hook more of these types of students. Mr. Chairman, um, Josh, do you think the eight months, the average, you know, you said you said one was here for one month. Is that a skewed number? Were there quite a few that only stuck it out for a month? With or the six eight month weeks? average that they stayed? Yeah, right. So I just, I took all of those 75 students and looked at when they registered and when they left. Okay. And it was an all average of all of those 70 some kids were here about eight months, but it was interesting data because like I said, some stayed for almost two full years and others were leaving within a month. So it was just a total average of all of those, that population. Okay, <clears throat> any further questions for Josh? The, the, I understand the state sets certain standards, but when a student leaves, it doesn't matter what standards they set, they're not gonna meet any of them anyway. Sure. I would rather say to heck with the state and their standards and say what can we do to help that student while they're here. If they're English language, obviously we wanna make sure that they, their language skills improve and then help them with other types of skills that they can use when they get out of here. Now, if they're serious about getting a, their, their, their degree or coming back there and getting a GED, obviously we wanna make sure they pick up all the classes that they can, but if, the, if, if we're finding that the, the, the majority of these students aren't graduating and our best education, I think, would be not to worry about that the state wants you to have a history and a geography and other and base and, and, and gear it more personally toward them and what it is that they need to get. So when they do decide that's enough for me, you know, we've given them the best they can. Like I say, they're not gonna get those other classes if they drop out anyway. So, so I wouldn't worry about that. I would think we should worry about what they can get, what we can give them and what we can do. And maybe if they get that stuff first, we might have a better chance of keeping them later on to pick up some of the other stuff to, to, and currently, to actually graduate. Currently, these students, their schedule would be very English language heavy, yeah. trying to build up basic language skills as quickly as possible. But you're right, our, our mindset is, can we build up the language supports with the student, but also in other classrooms where we can move them into other courses as quickly as possible? And then we could look at, well, what courses would be more appropriate? You know, maybe, maybe we don't push the classes that they have no interest in or, or bore right. them or, or they don't really care about, you know, and so I'm sure a lot of students say, I wish I could do that too. But in this case, I think, uh, uh, I think we need to look at it a little bit differently yep. or at least to see what we can do to entice them to stay as long as possible and, and, and help them as much as we can. And if they're not here, we can't do it. So our first goal should be to keep them here and what do we need to do that and, and thin out the things that aren't benefiting them and keeping them around. Okay, any further questions for Josh? This is an annual report, kind of, or what? And we give this report once a year. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll be shooting for that, yep. Okay. Okay, thank you, Josh, for the presentation. Moving on to approval of agenda. 2.1 consent agenda, we have three items to add. And we're going to add 4.333, approve employment of Ashley Yeske as school social worker at the intermediate school. 4.334, approve employment of Clara Fuentes and Cerventus as science teacher at the high school. And 4.335, approve employment of Megan Martin as third grade teacher at the intermediate school. We'll add those three items to the 
consent agenda. Two point two is the main agenda as listed. <coughs> so I need a motion to approve both the consent and the main agenda with the three items added. Chair, I move approval of the consent agenda with the additions and the main agenda as listed. Okay. Second. Motion by Lori, second by Matt to approve the uh, agenda as listed. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Three point approval of minutes. I so move to approve the minutes from 3.1 and 3.2. Okay, motion by Tom. I'll second the motion. Second by Lori to approve minutes 3.1 and 3.2. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.0, the consent agenda. We will now approve the items on the consent agenda. So move, Steve. Motion by Steve, second, second. by Lori. To approve the items on the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.0, main agenda. 5.1, monthly financial overview. So in the monthly financial overview, you should have received the 5.1.1. Uh, if you look at the revenues, we're running uh, slightly below last year's numbers, but it's relatively close within a percent. So kind of on target there for the budget. When you get down to the expenditures, you'll see we're running about 1% of the higher than the prior year. Overall, it's on target, and of course, we're in the last month, so there'll be a lot of year-end wrap-up expenditures, including salaries. So overall, the budget's on target, amendments have been done, and uh, we should be able to wrap up the year in pretty good shape, as based on the budget. Okay, any questions for John? Hearing none, we'll move on to 5.2. Approve resolutions establishing a combined polling place for certain multiple precincts and designating hours during which the polling place will remain open for voting for school district elections not held on the day of a statewide election. So we'll need a, a motion. I make a motion to approve the combined polling place. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Tom to approve the resolution of combining polling places. Any discussion? We have this, I'm assuming, all approved by the Lakeside Church. I think they've been a polling place during normal elections and stuff, so. One polling place. One. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ms. Okay. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Franz. Aye. Mr. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Widboom. Aye. Motion carries. 5.3 approved 23 24 preliminary budget. So uh, this was presented to the operations committee. Um, you will see that it's, it, there's uh, been some re revisions, but <clears throat> this is the month you have to approve the uh, preliminary budget so that we can have expenditures in July. And uh, you can see that the initial bus budgets, uh, $68.8 million and expenditures are expected to reach $69.5 million. So again, slightly over expending uh, based on what was presented. Operations Committee recommended approval. Okay, we need a motion. So moved, Steve. 
Motion by Steve. I'll second. Second by Lori to approve the 23-24 preliminary budget. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approve 5.4, approve committed fund balance for severance. Um, if you look in the documents, the uh, committed fund balance, if you remember a number of years ago, was actually probably close to 20 years ago, was up in the $800,000 range. Now it's $10,000. So not a very big com committed balance anymore. I move approval of the committed fund balance for severance. Second. Motion made and second to approve the committed fund balance for severance in the amount of $10,000. Any discussion? Is this about the last year of this? Are we close? A couple employees left? One. Okay. 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 All those, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.5 approves student, ex student expulsion. I move the approval of the expulsion. Motion by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. Any discussion? This is a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Woodburn. Aye. Motion carries. 5.6 approved resolution establishing dates for filing affidavits for candidacy. This is a normal filing period. It, yeah, it has to do with filling the vacant seat, which would be effective January of 24. I move approval of the resolution establishing the dates for the filing affidavits for the candidacy. Second. Motion by Lori, second by Tom. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Nope. Roll resolution roll again. Resolution, yeah. I'm not reading that. Good enough. Aye. 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 Motion carries. 5.7 approved resolution calling for special election to fill school board vacancy. I move approval of calling for the special election for the school board vacancy. Motion by Lori. Second. Second by Tom. This is a roll call vote. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Franz. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Woodboom. Aye. Motion carries. 5.8 approved res resolution approving tax abatement for a certain property pursuant to Minnesota statute 469. I so move for the tax abatement. Second. Jimmy Tom, second by Matt to approve the tax abatement request resolution. Roll call. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Woodboom. Aye. Motion carries. 5.9 approved changes to 2324 school calendar. So, with that, they would be staff development changes in relationship to um, meeting what the legislature uh, passed regarding reading. And it would be early dismissals, and it would be on December 13th, March 6th, April 17th, and May 22nd. We're actually ahead in our training compared to a lot of school districts. This allows us to can you continue that momentum that was there. Uh, Mr. Noble, could that maybe add some things if you have questions? What's the name of the program, the reading program? I've heard it a couple times, uh, or the acronym. Under the science of reading training, we're, it's through letters. We, letters, yeah, okay. Letters training, we'll have three full-time trainers that will work with our district. Initially, we were already moving to, we had two trainers in place to work with our K through three teachers and some of our EL and special ed teachers. When the READ Act was approved, it requires that all EL, all SPED, 
and actually ELA teachers in middle schools and high schools receive that training as well. We wouldn't necessarily need to do it next year, but we know districts will be trying to find trainers. So because we had a connection already with two, we added another one. Uh, we had ways to make it work with the other buildings where students could have stayed in session. We could have used paras and different support staff to have students stay in school while teachers were trained. Now with the vast number of teachers being trained, those four half days are pretty essential where students would just go home so teachers can receive that training. So letters training. Okay, okay. <clears throat> we need a motion. So move, would boom. A second. Motion made and second to approve changes to the 23-24 school year calendar as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.10 approve to hire additional boys soccer coach. This was presented to the instructional committee. We have uh, large numbers in the boys uh, soccer program. So when they work with the varsity, there's about probably another 45 to 50 uh, athletes that they need to work with and doesn't work well with one coach. So trying to get a second one there. And the committee recommended approval. I move approval to hire an additional boys soccer coach. Second. Commissioner Mallory, second by Matt to approve to hire another additional soccer coach. This is going to be posted then currently. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approve out of state professional development request. Um, this wasn't presented at the instructional, usually it is, but it came, it came in last minute and it was uh, a change to sending Mr. Langseth to the Character Strong National Conference. It works out because that's the uh, program or curriculum that we're utilizing across the district uh, to help meet students' social and emotional uh, needs and um, this works out well to get him the training. It's relatively the same cost as the training he was going to. So I would recommend approval. I move approval of that I'll state professional development for Mr. Langseth. Second. Second by Lori. Tom. Second by Tom to approve the recommended action. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approved contract agreements. So um, I have 10 different contract agreements that need approval for the district translators, multilingual coordinator, IT coordinator, uh, licensed coordinators at community ed, Communication coordinator, enrichment coordinator, youth development staff, NCIC youth development staff, NCIC cultural liaisons, uh, staff development, data assessment coordinator, and curriculum school improvement coordinator. The three that are not completed at this time are community education director, technology director, and teachers association. I can go through each of the percentages, but I know you have a piece of paper, so I I keep it moving if you want. Um, some of the percentages look higher. I'll tell you that some, there were days added on a couple contracts. A couple, we hired people lower than we probably should have, so it's a correcting factor to get them up where uh, they need to be based on um, a variety of comparisons that we do, and it's an alignment issue to get some of this corrected. So um, you'll see a wide variety of percentages. Um, example might be the NCIC 
uh, youth development staff and they're compared to another set that are part of the district, so. Any, yeah, okay, we need a motion. You can approve all at once, correct? You can approve them all at once or individual ones if you wanna go or if you got questions, I'll answer them individually. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, salaries and benefits for uh, negotiation settlements as presented. I'll second the motion. Motion by Steve, second by Lloyd to approve the 10 agreements that are listed. Any discussion? I just wanted to say that John's done a lot of this work and has met with every all these employees, puts a lot of time on it, and uh, he's negotiated a lot of this himself. We have to prove it, of course. And a few of these have been updated to bring, their, bring them up to speed where they should be, so. So I think it's a fair agreement, so. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify probably saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Going on to reports. Committee. So uh, I'll cover a couple things. The first one easy, we have 20 certified staff positions open. Um, <coughs> I do want to kind of give you a heads up. I'm going to probably increase the signing bonuses for a few of these tough to fill really needed a teacher in these classrooms. So I'm looking at, for some of these, example, uh, intermediate special education, I'm looking at doing a $10,000 signing bonus. We really need to get one special ed teacher. Um, the other ones that are high priority is uh, elementary music. High school needs a language arts teacher. And then we have what I'll call some secondary, probably um, elementary. Prairie needs a music teacher as well. Uh, we need a seed team, special ed seed team teacher. So we have some higher priority positions that we'll be looking to try and get filled. <coughs> and our time frame is getting short. So. Um, second item I had on here was the work session agenda. And on there, the agenda has gotten rather long. Um, we can try and cover as much as we can try and cover, but some of those things, um, I thought tonight would be a good time if you want to move some of these off or you want to create more focus um, on some of them. Some of them are probably more question and answer than maybe I'm not seeing that as a potential change, but it is a conversation that probably needs to be had. <clears throat> so if you look at it, if you have suggestions, thoughts, now would be the time to, <coughs> excuse me, address that. Mr. Chairman, a, a question, do, do we typically have just one work session during the year? Um, we schedule them as need be. So we could just move some of these items to us. <coughs> if we don't get through of them all. I just carry to the next. We can carry them on to the next one. Are That'd these my suggestion. Are these in a priority manner? Or like if we do that, get to the ones that are the priority on this list or move them around and. I don't think so. Okay. Sure. I was going to suggest the same thing, except if we maybe prioritize the ones that are really important and we want to get through. Others are probably <coughs> for discussion and such, and, and we go through what we can, and we get to a point where where it's getting late or it takes longer than we anticipated. We could always just stop and and then put leave the others go to another meeting at another time. 
Some of them like the Crailsheim Road, the legislations. You know, I mean, it's good to hear about the legislation, things coming up and stuff like that. But it, a lot of that's not really going to have a lot of effect on us here for a while. So those are those are some things I think if we didn't get to them, we could wait. Some of the other ones I think you have up toward the top already are things we probably really should be talking about at this point. So that'd be my suggestion. Leave them on the agenda so we know they're there and just go through what we can. And if we get to a certain point where it gets late or we get tired of discussing things, we can just stop and leave the rest for a later time. Okay, so you want to kind of prioritize these for the work session or? You can or I'll go through, or you can send me your priority item and I'll highlight them. Maybe I'll send a quick note out and each board member can send me their one priority or one section of priority. We have to go through the action plan. So that's number one, that's my priority. I, I'm, th I'm thinking perhaps we just have you prioritize them as, you, as you've heard the input from people, questions and such, and, and run them down, then maybe send out the new uh, ag proposed agenda, and if anybody has any concerns about something that they think should be moved up on the list, because it's that important, and so if they can then comment about it. Okay, I'll prioritize them. <clears throat> I'll readjust, or I'll have Lisa readjust. <laughs> Uh, one question, John, the operating referendum, <clears throat> should that be done sooner than later? So my recommendation on the operating referendum as you get into the conversation, we have to do it, if you plan to use your board authority, you have to do it before June 15th of 2024. I would actually tell you that my recommendation would be to do it this fall and just get things moving, one thing out of the way. and So I'd like to see it done in October. I think that's something that would be higher up on the list that we need to get to. I don't think it's going to take a long time for us to come up with uh, what to do with it at this point. So I, don't, I think that's going to be up further on the list, get it done and get out of the way. And I think that's an important one that we should know where we stand on it. Well, I know we... Um did the preliminary budget tonight and approve that for next year? Is there, I know, and we'll make a, a, amendments to it, so maybe an overview of what the, what it's gonna be or what the money and where the funding is gonna be so we can make a good decision about that if the operating referendum is gonna be enough at leaving it as is, or if we're gonna have to come back to the voters in a couple of years or an overall picture of what that looks like. Um, I've already talked to Mr. Morphew about that one sheet. Mm -hmm look out kind of a quick way to look at it. Um, so I've already he's working on it okay so I like that prioritized so the operating referendum gets renewed automatically for 10 years if we so decide to right if we want to approve the referendum operating referendum it stays the same for 10 years so in three years if we want to increase it we can come back and you have to hold an election so, so you increase the one that's already there, or we have another referendum? It would be a brand new. Then this one expires, and or we can't. It'd be no. above and beyond this one. Then it'd be above and beyond this one. So, example, you know, preschool, and there's some additional funding if you fall the revenue short, and you want to increase the budget a hundred dollars per pupil unit to cover preschool costs. So in two years, you could hold an election for $100 per pupil. That would be for other pro potential operating costs and preschool operating costs, as an example. But the current one would still be in place. The current one would still, still be in place. Still. They're just, you'd have offsetting referendum. And that's why I think we ought to have it up further on, make sure we get to that one on, on our work session. Get those questions answered. Know where we're going to stand, where we're going to go with it. So. I'll do a little prioritizing and. Okay. <clears throat> you can send out a list, and yeah. so we can review it. Last thing I wanted to cover before 
we quit, and I'll try and do it relatively quick, um, was negotiations with the teaching staff. If you remember, typically I've done uh, kind of a summary and update. So with that, uh, the teachers have uh, Article 5, which is teacher rights. We tentatively agreed to that change its kind of old language and some changes based on legislation. Um, extra compensation, which is the National Board certification. They want to see an increase in that pay. That Currently we only have, I think it's four teachers that are nationally board certified. Um, <coughs> with that in there, they had Um, eyeglass benefit, we were at $100 for if a student damaged a teacher's glasses, we'd reimburse $100. they are asking for full replacement. Leaves of absence, they wanted to add in climate weather and accidents to that emergency leave. Personal leave, uh, they found a spelling error, not a big one. Um, on the unused days, they wanted to be paid out at their daily rate. IEP management for special ed, they had some language regarding that. EL access, test prep preparation as well. Length of school year, they wanted to have one full day of in the classroom um, work time, one afternoon and one morning not on the same day. They did have class size language as well as pay for being above that. On the teacher severance side, uh, it's really now a 403B matching program. They increased the number of um, the various numbers as well as the dollar amounts on those. Uh, and then on the 403B, they automatic wanted an auto enrollment, not the responsibility of the teacher to select to participate. And then there was a written notification for late resignations they had in there. On special assignments, they wanted, uh, excuse me, yeah, on special assignments, Rather than what we use as the summer school, after school, they wanted daily rate versus um, what a specific, specific number we've set. On the community ed licensed teachers, <coughs> which is early childhood and <laughs> ABE, uh, they wanted to get rid of the, a lot of that language for pay, which again, we will be doing that um, because the legislature passed that and then they had some, uh, one extracurricular for winter dance competition JV coach position. And of course that was that. Their request for increase in compensation, which includes some of the language compensation was 20.65%, which did not include the class size language and when we kind of estimated we are closer to 27% request. So that's where the Teachers Association was on ours. In our part of it, we had part-time benefits. We did a cleanup of some language. Um, also clean up on in internal sub coverage as it was intended two years or a, two years ago when we negotiated it. Um, contributions for health insurance, there was a duplicate of some language, so we asked to remove some of that. Um, the district proposed personal leave changes and allowed them to take it in one hour increments. Um, likewise on deduct, language, we tried to put a little stronger language to help control. We want our staff in the classrooms working with kids, not gongs. 
Um, and then approval for leave of absence. There was a sentence where we put in to um, address some of that. Um, teacher severance, which is the old severance language, is no longer needed in the contract because the last teacher that was under that retired this year. And then slight adjustments in the 403B language uh, fr proposed from the district. Likewise, adjustments on activity association language. Uh, late resignation, we added a sentence related to that. And then um, schedule E special assignments, uh, removing North Central accreditation vis visitation. That's really old language, so we actually got a tentative agreement on that one. Um, and then we will have a memorandum of understanding for the VIBE teachers, which is part of that. And the district's proposal for um, financial improvement uh, was right at about 7% for the two years. Um, <laughs> we did propose two different pay structures, the current pay structure, and one without a schedule. So that all, I guess I should say 6.94% to be accurate. So that's the overview of where negotiations is at with Teachers Association. Next meeting is Monday the 26th at 9 a.m. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, John. Instructional committee report. Um, everything's been covered tonight, except one thing, Spencer Winnicky from the Learning Center did um, come to the meeting and present a new schedule, uh, some schedule changes for the Learning Center, um, just some things that he thinks gonna work a little bit better for them and other than that, everything else has been covered. Okay. Any questions for Laurie? Thank you, Laurie. And operational committee. Um, we um, talked a little bit or got an update on the on the new holiday, Juneteenth or the 19th of June. Um, we also uh, talked a little bit about the Krailsheim uh, project out, the improvement project that the county has uh, has decided not to move forward on at this point. And we also, it was in the, uh, in the uh, agenda for the consent agenda was the Minnesota Rural Education Association membership dues to continue our membership in that, which was approved tonight. Okay, any questions for Steve? Hearing none, any other reports? Other business work session were scheduled for July 6th at 5.30, the district office in the big large, in the new office area, the large conference room, our first workshop there on July 6th at 5.30. Any other future business? Hearing none, we'll call the meeting adjourned.